underwater. This Maya god is very dark brown, almost black, with black rimmed eyes and facial features that seem to be melting at their extremities. This can only be Exua. He's the patron god of the cacao bean, which accounts for his coloring. Also, because ancient Mesoamericans used those beans as currency, Exua became by extension a god of merchants and of trade. Interestingly, when he first appeared in the law, he was a god of conflict. to drain the room. Is this supposed to be one of the beheaded gods of the underworld? I can't carry any more.
have to find a way up. The piranhas are feeding on the corpses. Pulling won't keep the gate open. Have to find a way up. the water level. Have to lower the water level. Have to lower the water level. I am Trilo Serrano. And these are likely the last words I write. Andreas Lopez, or Angel de la Cruz, as he has called himself these last years, has finally and fully gone insane. His demands have grown, becoming more grueling and grotesque as we labor to build his crypt. The construction is almost complete. I know I will die when it is done, Lopez in a brief moment of clarity told me himself. Damn that box. Damn what it has done to the man I once, and sadly still, admire. When storms crash and rivers swell, direct the waters to quench the thirst of the gods who toil above and below. Have to lower the water level.
lower the water level. lower the water level. Shob is akin to the Maya version of a gnome or leprechaun. They're about as high as an adult's knee and wear traditional Maya clothing. They are created whenever a farmer builds a little house on his property for them, after which they'll help the corn grow for a period of seven years, making it rain and chasing off predators. They're usually invisible, and in spite of their benefit to the land, they like to play tricks on or frighten humans. Don't call one by name or you'll summon it from its home, and it won't be happy with you. Have to lower the water level. Have to lower the water level. Lower the water level. Now to get out of this horrid smelling place. I should be close now.
have enough space for that. St. John was the last of Jesus' apostles to die, and the only one whose life didn't end in martyrdom or suicide. As a writer of five books of the New Testament, he's the patron saint of theologians and scholars. 
Because of his long life, he was able to take on several students who continued his teachings after he died, establishing a line of religious study that remains unbroken to this day. Rumors have long persisted of monsters, for lack of a better term, in the area surrounding the mission of St. John. The locals refuse to discuss these sightings. They grow sullen when they are mentioned and usually scurry off and hide in their homes. However, it is my fervent belief, once we have converted the populace, they will see these monsters as nothing but superstitions, shadows that disappear in the Lord's light. These are two legendary trees which complement one another. The Chechen tree secretes a substance which is poisonous upon contact, and the nectar of the Chaka tree can neutralize that poison before it results in serious burns. The fascinating thing about these trees is that they always grow very near to each other. According to legend, two brothers, warrior princes, fought a battle to the death over the love of a woman and died in each other's arms. They begged the gods for forgiveness, and it was granted. Kinich, the kind one, was reborn as a benevolent Chaka tree, while Tizik, the hate-filled one, was reborn as the poisonous Chechen tree. Sounds like trouble. All full up. Can't carry any more. Ugh, smells like rotten eggs. Sulfur. <laughs> 